in this video we're going to go over illustrating the given identities by drawing the venn diagrams for each of the sides of the equal sign as the question reads okay so uh, as much as we get to talk about that i also want us to understand how we get to remember these laws so we'll start with de morgan's laws so de morgan's laws if you want to remember them just uh, write a with b in brackets where one is having a union one should have an intersection so you have a union b then you have a complement there so then the other part we can say a intersection b then a complement outside so what happens basically is what we have inside there is supposed to change so the a is going to become the a complement so just know that the middle sign there is supposed to change so it will become intersection then the other part we expect that to become union then so we have a complement union b complement these are the two de morgan's laws there so think of it as though we are distributing the complement there the complement of a is a complement then the sign should change then the complement of b is b complement there so the same applies to the second part so the intersection becomes a union so these are the two de morgan's laws so how do we get to show them how do we get to to illustrate the given identities by drawing the venn diagrams so i'll start with the first de morgan's law we know that we've been given a union b complement then this is equivalent to a complement intersection b complement so i'll start with my right hand side so for my right hand side when we say a union b complement it requires us to shed the region outside what outside the union so basically i'll start by drawing a union b itself so if you look at a union b a union b requires that you get to shed what you get to shed the region what the region of um, a and b so if you have your a there and you have your b there basically what we're trying to say is we are saying this entire region combined together is what we call what a union b so that is your first diagram then on your second diagram you're supposed to illustrate that a union b complement therefore is going to be the region outside that so what we're going to have as a final diagram on our left hand side let me just draw that again so we're going to have our a then we'll have our b there okay so don't mind the drawing so you have um something like that so your universal set of course then you have your a and your b so a union b so it's a region outside the combination of a with b because the union requires you to combine all the elements in a and b so your a union b complement is going to be the region outside so basically what we've shaded is a union b what complement so we've seen that it's outside both a and what both a and b then on the right hand side this requires us to look at a complement and b complement so i will first of all draw the first diagram showing my a complement so we have our a and we have our b then i can use a different color there so when you talk about so i'll say this diagram to represent our a complement so it would require us to shade the region outside what outside a so the region outside a is all that so that is region that is outside a then for b complement basically what do we have so that's what we have uh, so we have our a and our b so for our b complement we're just going to share the region outside what outside b so now when you say a complement intersection b so what region is common between the two that we've shaded there what is the common region so basically what you're going to have is uh, the diagram that you're going to present there is basically going to come out as the one that is on the left there so we have our a and we also have our what? our b there 
So you can write that. So we have our A and we have our B. So the intersection of A complement and B complement, basically, if you try to look at and arrays at the two diagrams that we have, the common region, basically, that we have is just region outside these sets. So which is basically matching up with um, the first diagram that we had or not on our left hand side. So we've shown for the first part. Let's try to move. For the second identities, we are required to show for the distributive laws. So like I've said, I need to help you also how to understand the distributive laws. So basically, what are distributive laws? <laughs> so when you look at distributive laws, basically this comes from the idea of a multiplication. So if you have A being multiplied by B plus C, basically you understand that this is the same as A, B plus what? Plus A, C. So what does that mean? That means that basically you have a multiplication sign there, which is also being going to multiply those guys there. That's what you have. Okay. So this requires you to use two different signs. So if I put intersection there, so it means that inside the brackets I'm going to have union because we have multiplication and addition. So basically on the other side where there is intersection, I'll put the intersection. So we have A intersection B. Then in between we maintain union A intersection C. The other way you can think about this is multiply this by that, you have that. Multiply this again with that, you have that. Then the union is supposed to be in between. So the same works if you have B, or sorry, if you have, you can also start with the union, where you say A union, then you have B intersection C. So you multiply again. A union by B is going to be A union B. Write the sign that you have intersection, then you have A union what? C. So I just like multiplying, distributing. So these are the, the two distributive laws that we have. So then how do we get to shape them? How do we get to show them? So basically I'm going to show one, then you can work on the other one. Okay, so for the first dis distributive law, what are we saying? We are saying you have A intersection, then you have B union C there. On the other side, what do you have? You have A being intersected with B, then unionize with what? Unionize with A intersection what? Intersection now I see there. That's what we have. But then what, we, what are we trying to look at? We're trying to show the left and the right hand side by shading on the Venn diagrams. I'll start with my left hand side. So basically what does it mean when you say A intersection B union C? So like usual, I advise you guys to start with what is in the brackets. So for what we have in the brackets, we have B union C. So in this case, we have two different, three different sets. So I'll draw such a Venn diagram where we have our A, we have our B, then we have our C. So I'll not show the, the diagram outside. So we have A, B, and our C. So which one is our B union C? So B union C requires us to combine the entire region of B combined with C. So I'll shade the entire region of B. Then I also shade the entire region of what? Of C. So that is our B union C. So now intersect that region. Combine it together with what? Combine it together with your A. So in short, you are trying to ask to say what region is part of A? It's this region. The region that is shaded and also part of what? Part of A. So basically, what is going to come out as our final diagram is going to be something like this. So you have your A, you have your B, then you have what? You have your C there. That's what we're looking at there. Okay. So let's try to show that. So we have our A, we have our B, we have our C. Of course, taking note that our inversor set is there. So the common region that we're going to have is basically just this part, as we can see from the first diagram. So we've shown for our left hand side. So we've shown first of all by starting with uh, this part. 
you can even indicate that that is our b what union c okay so on the right hand side what are we going to have so first of all we do have a intersection b so if you look at a intersection b how is that diagram going to come out a intersection b so i can then draw that so i'll say a b and what c then i can write them so we have our a b and c so a intersection b requires you to share the region that is common between our a and what our a and our b so it's basically that region that i've shaded there that is our a intersection b so we are unionizing this part with a intersection c so we can also draw the other side so we have our b we have our a our b and our c so we're trying to shade a intersection c the region common between a and c that's the region there so now at the end of the day what are we interested in we are trying to combine the two because of a union in between so what happens if you get to combine these parts that we've shaded then you combine them on one final diagram so what you're going to have is this you have your a you have your b and then you have your c so basically we'll start i'll start with the first part which is that region shaded then the other diagram it's this region that is also shaded so if you combine the first um, what is on the left and what is on the right basically what we have is basically the same of course using the different approach so we are pro proven the distributive law there so feel free to try out the other one where it is a union b intersection c equivalent to a union b intersection a union c so try out that other distributive law and try out the proof and give us a comment if you're able to do it if you have challenges let us know in the comment section all right associative laws now um just like we've understood how to memorize or basically how to remember distributive laws let's also try to understand how we get to remember associative laws so associative comes from the basic concept of uh, addition right so i'll say adding numbers to to maybe three plus four this means that you're starting first of all by adding what is in the brackets then on the other side it is also the same as adding two plus three then you come and add the four at the end these guys will give you the same solution the interpretation is going to be that so two plus seven is same as five plus four so now what if we get to substitute what we have with letters there so basically we're going to say a intersection b intersection c is the same as first of all a intersection b the intersection c that's the interpretation for union so the other distribute the, the other associative law you put union there so i'll show for this one so basically we're trying to find the intersection between a and b intersection c so we already know what our a is so i'll start with b intersection c b intersection c means so in this case what we have we have three different sets so we have a so we have our a we have our b then we have what we have our c so we have a b and c so b intersection c is basically the region between common between b and c which is that region there that is b intersection c then we're trying to find its intersection with what its intersection with a so if you look at the shaded region which part is also part of a because of the intersection there so if you want to make more sense to your lecture what you can do is you can even show you put intersection then you show for your a so of course you've shown that this is b intersection c then on the other side you can even draw let me do something like this so i don't have enough space this was supposed to be part of the left hand side so you have your a b and c then you shade the region of what your a you even put that that is your a so 
basically when you look at the intersection of the two what you're going to have as a result is um, basically just going to be so you have your a you have your b and your c so we are saying that is your a that is your b and that is your c so it's just going to be the middle part there the middle part so in short what we're saying is it's this region that is common okay so that is how you show so i can erase this part of a so it's of course we had shown that so the final diagram that we've come up with is this diagram where we have our a we have our a our b and our c so it's basically just this region that is common okay so the other part requires us first of all to start with a intersection b so if you say a intersection b basically what you are first of all this requires you to you draw then you are looking at what you are looking at your a b and c so you're looking at the intersection of a with b so it's basically that region that region that is part of a and b so you can then show you that uh, what you've shaded is uh, a intersection b then you intersect it with c so you can show c so you have your a you have your b and your c so shading our c is this region so we have c there so notice that i'm showing so we have our c on our right hand side so now the intersection of the two will basically also just give us what the same result that we have okay so we are going to have something like this so you have your a you have your b and what and your c so the common region that we have is uh, the middle part there if you compare the two sets what we have is uh, that part and uh, and that part so it's that region there so you've shown the two different ways so now your challenge or your work under associative law you can also look at this part you try first of all by showing a union b union c which require you first of all to show b union c then you come and show first of all a union b then you come and combine with what c so this is